Hello everyone and welcome back to ASP.NET Core 1.0. My name is Steve Bishop and in this video we're going to be talking about using a view start file. Now a view start file runs code on the primary view before the view is rendered. So when we call our index.cshtml or our customer list.cshtml file, this view start file will actually run code against that view before the view is rendered. The most common usage of a view start file is to define a default layout for your application. The view start page is put in a location that is found by the Razor view engine every time a view is rendered. And because of that, it can run a default or specify that default property for each view that it tries to render. Now, since a view start runs code on the primary view before it's rendered, it can run really any C sharp code that you want it to or that it can access on that view before it's rendered. So you can do some uh, some interesting things with this, which we'll talk about a little bit later in this video. And finally, you typically want to place this uh, view start file in the views folder not in the shared folder. The shared folder where we put our layout file, uh, that folder is looked at as kind of a last resort for where should it look for that uh, layout file. But a view start is something that we want to try to find ahead of time. And as such, by convention, the Razor View Engine is going to be looking at the hierarchy of the uh, view folder structure. And it's first going to look inside the subfolder for a view start file. So if we're running the customer's controller and we're looking for an, a file, uh, a view inside of that subfolder for the customer's controller, it will first look for a view start file in that customer's subfolder. If it cannot find one, then it will look not to the shared folder, but it will look to the, the root of the views folder. And I know that can be a little confusing because, uh, you know, we've already learned about the convention of shared folder being a default location for things to be shared universally across views. But this view start file is a little bit different in that it needs to be in the root of your views folder or within one of those subfolders that you want it to belong to for that controller. So let's go ahead and hop into Visual Studio and create our first view start file. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my views folder and I'm going to right click and select add new item. And I'm going to select the MVC view start page. And you'll notice that by default, the uh, Visual Studio wants to name this underscore view start with a capital V and a capital S. Now this is a convention that MVC will use uh, when it's looking for the view start file. If you were to name this view start anything other than underscore view start .cshtml, it wouldn't find it and it wouldn't act appropriately. So let's go ahead and use this underscore view start .cshtml and select add. And by default, we can see layout equals underscore layout. This is code that is put into this view start file automatically by Visual Studio. It's grown to be such a custom to define the layout property for each one of our views that they just went ahead and wrote that in there for this view start file. Now, one thing I should point out here is that it is using the name of our layout, similar to what we did in our home controller. If we look inside of our home controller, we have our index action and we just use the name of the view that we want to display, right? We didn't specify a complete file name like we did here for our layout of our index file. And this was in our last video where we did this, where we defined the layout with a complete, uh, with a string that points to the complete uh, path to our layout file. Instead, this view start file is saying, use the name of the layout rather than the full path to the layout. And what's gonna happen is that the Razor View Engine is smart enough to know to look for a layout view or a view layout that has this underscore layout as the name. So you can really do either or. You can give it the full path 
to that layout view, or you can just give it the name of the layout. But just beware that by giving it the full path, you are being very specific about which layout.cshtml file you want to use. If I created another underscore layout.cshtml file, and I put it underneath our customers uh, subfolder, you know, and again, need it layout underscore layout.cshtml. Well, it would go and find that underscore layout.cshtml file and use it underneath that subfolder. And that would take priority or precedence over the one that it finds in the shared folder. So just be aware that sometimes it's a good idea to specify, be very specific about the exact layout file you want to use. But in other cases, it's just perfectly acceptable if you just want to have it look for the layout file and look for it in either uh, you know that subfolder or the shared folder and whichever one it finds that's perfectly fine so I'm good with this I'm good with this layout just being called or, or uh, just being assigned this underscore layout now what I'm gonna go ahead and do is go to my customers list uh, or customer list excuse me and I'm just gonna comment out the layout and I'm gonna do the same thing for the index file I'm just gonna comment this out now let's go ahead and save this and I'm gonna go ahead and go to debug, start without debugging, because I don't need the debugger for this since I'm working with views. Uh, it should be fairly straightforward and I can make my changes in my CSHTML files on the fly and the debugger will go ahead and work properly anyway. So I don't need to use debugging. So we'll just go ahead and start without debugging. And now we'll go to Mr. Tom Burke's profile. by going to the index customer key I don't care we can see Tom Burke we get our header right our h2 header and we get the first name last name and I'm just gonna take a look at the source of the document and we can see that we still get filled in from our layout we get the HTML the head and the body tags with the h2 and the uh, the title of our page and again that comes from our layout view in our shared folder right that's where we got our html head uh, the title and the h2 uh, the h2 header before the body of our view was rendered so we can tell that it is working that the view start is setting the layout property of our index view even though we've commented it out here it is setting the layout property to this layout that gives us the view bag title uh, both as the title and the h2 tag now if i don't want this to be the case if i want to specify a different view i can do that still here in my view i can be very explicit about use layout 2 for example instead of using the underscore layout so if you want to override what is set by the view start file you can still override that here in your view and it will take precedence over what is in the view start file and it's also because of that uh, the fact that this overrides that uh, that view start file we can also set the layout to null so if we don't want a layout at all if we want to override this default here that's being set by the view start and say no no don't use a layout at all with this file or with this view then you can go ahead and set it to null and if you do so we're going to see that the header goes away and also our our actual tags you notice that we're missing now the html tags with the meta tag and the body and header and all that good stuff so typically you're only going to want to do that if you are doing a complete html document in one file here now I'm going to go ahead and comment this layout null so that we don't do that anymore. And I just kind of want to show you that if you put this view start file inside of the shared folder instead, let's go ahead and save that change. And if I re uh, refresh this again, we'll see once again, we don't get the layout. The layout is not found. And that's because the view start file, since it's in the shared folder, and it's not in the default views folder, it's not going to work. But I can put the view start file underneath the same subfolder as the view that I'm wanting to render. So now that the view start file is inside of the customer's subfolder, 
and I'm calling the index view here, it will find that view start file in that customer subfolder and use it to set the layout. So let's go ahead and save those changes. And if we come back here and refresh again, we should now see our Tom Burke header has reappeared and the body and the head tags have reappeared for our document. Now, this view start file, if it's underneath a subfolder, it takes precedence over the one that it finds in the views folder. So just keep that in mind. If you have a view start file in one of these subfolders, that's the one that the view is going to use and not the one that's underneath the views folder. So I'm going to go ahead and move this view start file back to the root, the views folder. And now I want to do something with that view bag title, right? We've got this title being set here uh, as the title tag, and we've also got it for H2. And right now we're currently setting it in our index action and in our customer list action, right? We're setting the view bag title there and we're setting it there. But what I can do is I can use this view start file to write my own C sharp code. And this is dangerous. I, I want to tell you, this is really not a good idea to do what I'm about to do. Uh, most developers will really frown upon you writing some sort of C sharp that's supposed to run before each one of your views goes. But I do want to at least inform you that you can do this because there are some useful times where this can come in handy. And sometimes one of those times is in this case where I can go ahead and take a look at the view bag, or I should say, I'm going to set the view bag title property equal to, uh, and what I'm going to assign it to is if there is a view bag dot title property, then go ahead and set it to that property. So if I pass into this view, a view, a title property on the view bag, then go ahead and reset it. Go ahead and reset view bag title to whatever was passed in. However, if the title is null, and you may not know this operator, this actually uh, allows us to check and see if this is null. So it returns null, uh, null or dot. So if there is a title, it will return the title. If the null, if the title is null, then it will return null. And by doing that, what I can do is I can use the null coalescence operator and say, uh, if it's null, then I want to use welcome to Contoso. Okay, so we're basically saying if you have a title, use that title and reset the title for the view bag. If you don't have a title, then set the title property to welcome to Contoso, okay? So that's just one way that it might be useful to you. I, I typically don't see this very often. Um, you know, usually it's frowned upon to have some code kind of hidden somewhere that runs on everything and run, runs as an operation on everything. It's very useful for a layout when you want to set a default layout, but typically you don't want to be setting property values like this uh, on a on a view or you know running any particular code not only because it's just a bad practice but also because every view that you render has to run through this code and that may slow down the the rendering of the view but i just kind of wanted to show you that this could work so i'm going to go ahead and save this and just to demonstrate how this works if i go and say uh instead of showing the customer list well let's go ahead and run it as it is right now save everything and i'm just going to do the customer list and as it stands now we will get customer list as the title so both up here in the header or excuse me at the top of the uh the page and as our header there as part of the website but if i comment this out on the controller so the controller is no longer setting that title then the view start We'll go ahead and set that title for me. And now if I refresh this, we get the welcome to Contoso header and the welcome to Contoso at the top of the page. So that's just something that you can do. It's kind of a nice little handy thing. And there are special use cases where this makes sense to do some little bit of code like this behind each view, but typically you're not going to want to do this because it's just a really bad practice.
Now in the next video, we're going to talk about another file similar to what the view start file does, uh, but it has a different purpose to it. So I hope to see you guys in that next video. If you liked this one, please don't forget to like, favorite, and subscribe to my channel to help the channel grow. And don't forget to share any videos that you really find interesting along the way and let your friends know that uh, you found this channel and that they should check it out. So thank you so much for watching, and I look forward to seeing you guys, like I said, at the next video.